Okay, good morning, everyone. Lacey Fraser here with Whole Soul School and Foundation. It's April 2020. And we here at Whole Soul School and Foundation are committed to bringing you uplifting and inspiring podcasts this month and every month, but especially this month as we are all sheltering in place due to our global health crisis. I thought it very apropos, well, both Marie and I thought it very apropos to to interview people in our life who are committed to also inspiring wellness and mind, body, spirit wellness for, for, for people all around the globe. And that is who we are going to be interviewing this month. Uh, we are so excited about this. We will also be having at least one, if not two, fireside chats around this topic as well. So thank you for joining us today. And I am with my friend and fellow Authentic Leadership Coach, Kelly Chapman. And Kelly is the founder of the Meredith Whole Living Center in Meredith, New Hampshire, which is a really unique holistic wellness center. And I can't wait for Kelly to tell us a little bit more about it uh, in, in Meredith. It is one of a kind it's in New Hampshire. And it's known as a float and wellness spa, which combines the relaxation and pampering of a traditional spa with clinically proven services that reduce stress, anxiety, depression, and pain, all while increasing overall wellness and mindfulness. So welcome, Kelly. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for asking me. Yes, I, you and I have talked and we have wanted to, to have a chat like this for a long time, and I am just... Of course, it took a global pandemic to actually slow us down to be able to make this happen. But I am thrilled to be to be talking with you today. And maybe first, you could share with our listeners a little bit about what inspired you to create such a unique um, center for people, uh, and why Meredith, New Hampshire, and and what kind of services make uh, the 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 whole living center so unique. So maybe start with inspiration and then move into to, to what, make, what makes it so unique. So the, the original inspiration began um, during my first career out of college. Um, I was very passionate about um, working with other adults to serve young people in my community. Um, I still am. Um, and what I, I, I began recognizing and realizing is that I was working alongside many uh, committed adults who were who are pouring themselves into a lot of programming um, to sort of try to help young people build healthier lives for themselves, but we weren't necessarily modeling it ourselves or experiencing it ourselves. Mm. And so at a certain point in my life, um, I started exploring yoga and meditation and, and some, uh, some modalities. And I, I experienced tremendous changes in my, my own, you know, ability to think clearly, my anxiety um, sort of lifted, um, and I was able to just really experience life very differently than I had been, um, and I decided that I wanted to share that with others. Um, so I spent a few years getting trained in different modalities, I got my yoga teacher training, um, I, uh, you know, became certified um, in Reiki and um, eventually found, you know, what, what is currently my, my, my deepest uh, love in terms of my own personal um, modalities for offering, which is um, a Raleigh Coaching Academy and Authentic Leadership Coaching. Um, and it was almost miraculous. Um, as that was wrapping up, I, I had just, I just had been talking um, as somebody who was really between stable employment, which sounds ridiculous, you know, and, and to many viewpoints, but I just had this feeling and knowing that I was being called to create some sort of established center. And lo and behold, as I was wrapping up my coaching training, I was presented with the opportunity um, to be able to do so. Um, and, you know, truly with the New Hampshire, I have a family history in the area. At the time I was living in North Carolina, um, and I just, I, I had a calling to go back up north and I, and the, it was very clear calling to go up back up to um, the New Hampshire Lakes region. Um, and there's a, you know, a, a, a longer, but beautiful story about how we ended up in the exact location that we did. It was actually, um, 
it was it was on the heels of a massive disappointment that had really caught our attention and that we were you know really trying to get this this one other property and by following that to the end and then really just you know like realizing we had to let it go and going out to dinner one night the the current center's location had just gone on the market that day wow. and it was it was really incredible it was almost like you know everything sort of happened to hold to hold my attention until it was ready for this the property where we currently are to be available and then everything cleared up it, it ended up being the right location for the center um so yeah so that um to talk about you know sort of the 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 underlying philosophy and why we chose certain certain modalities um you know one of the things we feature that at the time was the first in new hampshire and and now um you know the industry is certainly growing um is flotation therapy um and there are a lot of reasons why you know i thought that 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 would be a wonderful investment to add to a center um and one being that you know as a coach and you know, just someone who, who genuinely wants others to feel, you know, truly connected to their own personal power. I loved this idea of a modality where it was, it was, it was basically designed to help people, you know, sort of like take away a lot of the, the frenetic energy and things that we might come in with and really connect people to their center. Kelly, can you talk, can, excuse me for interrupting, but you, you, you said flotation therapy. Could you talk a little bit about uh, what that actually is and then, and then continue with sort of what, it, what its benefits are? Because I, I know for me, it was, I had never heard of it before and didn't know anything about it. And I know that it is something that is uh, growing. I, I, I see it, it's in our town and I know there are many places around the country that are that are kind of onto this thing. Kind of, it reminds me of the growth of of yoga and meditation and things like that. So, can you speak to us exactly about what it is and and share with us its benefits? Absolutely. Um, so, so the float tanks are designed. They have about ten inches of water that are filled with around like nine hundred to twelve hundred pounds of Epsom salt, um, and the idea is to get to um, the specific salinity level where um, any human could kind of like go in and it um, and essentially float effortlessly. Um, and so the tanks are designed, they're also sometimes, you know, called sensory deprivation tanks. Um, and so the idea is we remove, you know, between, you know, 70, 90 plus percent of sensory input from, from um, the individuals experiencing the therapy. So, um, between quiet and light blockage, um, the water and the air um, are, are kept at very specific temperatures to get as close to skin temperature as possible. Um, and so the idea is by blocking out the senses and even blocking out our ability, you know, with the floating of up, down, you know, like where does the body begin and end? By doing this, what we're able to do is to, is to really take away all that is not the person experiencing the therapy and essentially leave them with themselves um, in, a, in a very meaningful way. Um, so so when, if you think about it, even right now, just as we're having this, com this conversation in our homes, um, I'm thinking about what I'm going to say to you. Um, I'm, you know, even though I'm sitting here and I'm calm, I'm processing up, down, there are colors and shapes in the room. Um, you know, there really is quite a bit of sensory input that we're, we don't even realize we're processing, even in yeah. common moments. Um, and so by taking that away, our own internal awareness becomes increasingly heightened. Um, you know, I've had floats where, you know, I'm like, what is that sound, right? And I realize it's my own heartbeat or my own breathing. So our, our awareness of even our own physical internal cells becomes heightened as well, as well as, you know, mental, emotional, and spiritual, depending on where people are personally in any given float. Um, from a physical perspective, you are, you know, just basically completely suspended. So if you can imagine even the most comfortable, supportive bed, there's always going to be something pressing on, on something. This basic, um, by, by lying in the solution, you're essentially taking 100% of pressure off of your skeletal system, your, um, your muscular system, your, your joints, your tendons, everything, and really allowing the body to just sort of 
relax and be. Um, and we find that by allowing the body to enter this state on a regular, semi-regular basis, the, our bodies and our minds and our spirits are so primed to heal. Mm. Um, and this is something that's very, very dear to my heart to share with everyone um, because this is something I believe, you know, truly in my heart is that while we are, are alive, we are healing. To really remind every person who walks through our doors that they are the modality. The power to heal is innately and inherently theirs. Wow. Wow. I mean, I, I'm just sitting here um, closing my eyes and listening to you and imagining that experience. And uh, it's, it just sounds incredibly powerful and deep uh, on so many levels. It's, it's been incredible. And the, one of the most beautiful, beautiful things to witness is how there's no way of knowing what someone's experience will be. And we're, we never cease to be amazed what people, what people experience and tell us they experience. And, and just even knowing that there are so many experiences people wow. have had, that we might never even know about, but trusting that they're occurring. So I have a question, Kelly. The average person walking the planet may not be as in tune or awake to sort of the benefits of this incredible modality. Uh, so I'm wondering how how people are are finding you and and are they, is it sort of by referral? Are people having these experiences and then telling other people? Uh, do you find that people are, are, are waking up to themselves as healer uh, more and more? What is your sort of experience of kind of how people are, are waking up to, to the truth of who they really are, essentially? So, so fascinatingly, it's, it really has been all of those things. Um, we have everything from, you know, we have some people, they kind of hear what, what floating offers and they think, I want to do that. Um, we have people who come in and they've never really heard of um, float therapy, but we have some other um, services that maybe are a little bit more considered more mainstream, like massage therapy um, and, and facials and, and other things at the center. And maybe they have their first experience because they're giving themselves a day of pampering. And what's really beautiful and what we've noticed is that we've had people have incredible experiences that they almost don't even understand how they've had them. Yes. Even on those, those days where they think they're coming in just for a little spa day and they end up having just this completely unexpected uh, transcendental experience. Mm essentially walk away from from eating disorders after a period of regular floating um so there's something about tapping back into that essence of who we are that is disembodied that actually can help heal our relationship with our bodies um and these are not even in many ways these aren't even things that we necessarily advertise because how can you advertise yeah. every possibility that a, a human being can have but they certainly are the reason why um, it just feels really good to continue offering the treat the services. You know, certainly there there are things like back pain. Um, they are studying. There's actually um, if anyone's interested in more research, um, clinicalflotation.com. But they are studying. You know, effects on anxiety, depression, um, and what we're finding is, you know, what we know when we can create an environment that decreases the flood of stress hormones that, that sadly many of us are, have almost become accustomed to, to living with on a daily basis. When we create an environment where the body is able to sort of calm itself and, and reduce you know, some of those, those hormonal reactions and, um, and, and kind of like really settle that down, the body, the mind, and the spirit are then able to attend to uh, you know, parts of themselves that are in need of healing that maybe have been put on the back burner when we're in that sense of, of fight or flight. Wow. 
you know, it, it, you know, the first thing I think of is everybody needs one of these in their homes um, <laughs> or, or, or at least there needs to be one in every neighborhood or something. I would love to see them there more often. I will say there is a benefit to having a team. I, I personally have an, the most incredible team on the entire planet. I am totally biased, but I also 100% believe that, um, who takes care of these things because they don't take care of themselves and they are, they are machines. Um, that being said, I genuinely believe we would live in a different world if everyone were, were able to access what the tanks have to offer. Yeah. Wow. It just sounds like an incredible experience. And can, are you, when you're in the tank, are you completely enclosed? Yes. Um, so in, in our models, yes, they are starting to come out with some um, other models that are in more open air settings. And it, um, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting about the style of them. They really do run the gamut. And I often think that the style actually isn't so much to do with your experience is it's, has more to do with your comfort level of getting into it. So we have a pod and we have a room um, and we have some people who, you know, love one or both or either. We have some people who think I'm very claustrophobic, you know, like I'm, I don't want to go in the pod, but I'm comfortable, you know, trying the room. The, the, the funny thing, the interesting thing is that once you are in there, because of the nature of the therapy, you really lose sense of where you are. So a lot of I believe a lot of what we see in terms of the commercialization of how the tanks look has a lot more with getting people into the tank than how they necessarily are going to respond to the modality. So if you are in an area um, that has maybe one of the more, um, you know, uh, original models and you're thinking, well, that's not, you know, like that doesn't look like the fancy ones I see, you know, online, please, please try it out anyway, if you feel comfortable because once you're in there, the whole idea is for you to lose your, your sense of where you are. Wow. So therapy should not be affected. Yeah. Wow. Well, I, um, I think it's, I think it sounds like an incredible modality for self-healing. And I think it is just incredibly wise and, and courageous of you to, to in, invest in such a, an, in a way, an innovative approach, and in a way that it feels a little like ancient wisdom. Um, because I, I isn't the, is it the 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 Dead Sea or the Red Sea that that the is the Dead Sea, right? Where where you you go and and the salinity is is so great that you float. Yes, and we are we're we're a, a, we're a tad actually even more um, floatable than the Dead Sea, but that's the closest thing in nature that I know of. And, and it was a place of healing, if I'm, if I'm remembering my, my history. Yes. Yes. So, so I think you're bringing sort of this, this ancient modality and this ancient wisdom to our modern day. And I, and I love that because I think so many of us now awakening on the planet are, are realizing what the ancients have known for, for a long time. Um, and I just, I think it's so wonderful. So I, I, and I also think you and I could talk for a long time about the actual experiences that people are having and, and how they are, are healing themselves in this way. Um, it just fascinates me, uh, but we have, we have limited time today. So I just want to thank you for talking about the center. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you so much to your team who I know is working all the time to, to help people heal and have these experiences. And I definitely hope that I can, I can visit the Merit at the Whole Living Center someday in New Hampshire for sure. I can't wait to have you up. Yes. Yes. And so I wanted to move one of the, one of the other reasons that uh, I reached out to you was because I was very moved by a recent Facebook post that you posted uh, during this, this time, in this time of this global pandemic. And I wanted to share it with our listeners because I think it has a deep message that maybe could help remind a lot of us of, of what's, what truly matters. And it might also provide a different perspective for how to, how to move through these times. So if you're okay, 
I would love to read this post and and then talk a little bit more about it if 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 that if that works for you. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so you said my incredible sister Kim has been making masks for our family. And when I received mine, I teared up at the familiar motif. As many of you know, my sister's second son, Thomas James, was born still in 2017, a year that was already proving to be challenging for myself and my family. His death was shocking and crushing and has also been one of my greatest teachers. On the day we learned he'd passed, I was in Pasadena after a night out at a YouTube concert with a dear friend and we had already planned on seeing my cousin that morning. I was new to New Hampshire at that time and remember it feeling like a miracle that I was with two of my closest people that day. I was told that I wouldn't be able to see my sister for a few days and so continued with my friend on our planned drive to Mexico. It was truly one of the most amazing drives I've ever taken with the sun putting on a fantastic show as it sank over the Pacific and I was mesmerized at the horror and the beauty of it all. I found it incredible that as humans, we had, we had been designed to witness and experience everything that is created in this world and the contrasts within it. Yesterday, on the same day the New York Times reported the possibility of mass graves in New York, I took my daily walk to the beach. And while I'm fully aware of the horrors and uncertainty surrounding us, I couldn't help but ta also take in so much peace, hope, and beauty. I know there's a lot of talk about how we can, we can and should be feeling right now. And if there's one observation I can add, it's that it's all true, all of it, everything. And that I truly believe we're designed to withstand and hold it all. So I was so moved by this, by this post and its power um, and the fact that you so eloquently were able to describe, you know, um, the, in both circumstances, the tragedy and the trauma and the grief and the horror of, specific, of a specific situation that you were experiencing, while at the same time, you were able to witness and observe the beauty and the peace and the harmony around you. And I just, and, 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 and then to be able to talk about holding both of those essences, all of that energy together. I just thought it was so profound. <laughs> I'm wondering if you could sort of, maybe elaborate a little bit on just the feelings uh, associated with what you were really saying there. When I think back to the day that I first really started being aware of how, for lack of better words, how everything the world is um, and how everything, um, you know, divinity is, whatever we want to call it, whether we're, you know, spiritual or not, um, it, it wasn't a day necessarily I would have chosen. It wasn't a day when I just felt like going on, going to Mexico. Um, this was a trip that had deep meaning to me because I had just opened the center. Um, and originally when I opened the center, I had, um, I had been engaged and the, the creation story to an extent really in my mind had been set up to be one thing. And for many, many reasons, um, many that I appreciate, you know, now on the other side of it, um, that ended up not happening. So this was a trip I took to sort of get away to clear my head because not only did, you know, had the, um, the engagement and the business relationship completely broken down and I had to grapple with that, but I was, I was in a way, um, you know, being asked to recreate my own vision for what, for what my life was going to, to look like and mean and what my new story was. It was the very beginning of realizing I needed a new story. Um, and so that is sort of the background of how I even, I found myself in, in the moment. And, um, and on my, the previous year, actually, I found out on my, um, my birthday, actually, which is June 2nd, that 
Alex's due date was June 1st, which was, you know, and I was, you know, as an aunt, I'm thinking like, this is it, you know, like, I know it's going to be June 2nd, we're going to be birthday buddies. Um, and so already, Thomas was for our family, um, what is referred to in the lost community as like a rainbow baby. So for us to lose him, you know, on the heels of so many traumas and losses um, that felt like they were just coming in fast succession. Um, it was it was almost unbelievable to be experiencing that day and thinking, you know, it, it just is one of those moments where I don't even know how to describe it, but you just realize that you're, you're not really in control as much as you think you are. Um, and that we're continuously tasked no matter what's going on around us and no matter, you know, the, the blessings that unfold where, you know, like, like life keeps happening, um, you know, and uh, for me, that was a day where it became very apparent that these, these traumas and, and these losses and what felt like de de devastation was not the whole story because I also had this incredible opportunity to be with a dear friend who I wouldn't have been with um, had the other loss not happened. You know, like the, it's sort of like this opportunity to travel alone with a friend as a single person um, was actually born out of the other loss. Um, and, you know, from that, that experience and from my sister's experience through it, um, I really was able to see and witness firsthand the human capacity to endure and experience green and, and sun and uh, rainbows um, and butterflies. These are all symbols that have been incorporated into my family's story now because they were so much how, um, particularly my sister and her family, but you know, through our, my connection to them, myself as well, have been able to find, I mean, genuinely, you know, beautiful, beautiful aspects of, of these incredible losses that, 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 you know, even before a time like this, people have been experiencing the end of their worlds every day on this planet, you know, for, forever. Um, you know, just because it's not, right now we're, we're experiencing things collectively, but we all go through periods in our lives where we feel as though everything is just being, you know, everything is, there's just, you know, massive destruction. And we all go through times where, you know, like it's, it's hope and possibility. And so I think one of the things I, that, that experience gave me was just this recognition that we really have been, you know, designed to experience everything to, to hold, you know, like just an incredible range of emotions. They're all valid. They're all true. Um, and there's something within us that allows us. And I, you know, with me personally, I often refer to, you know, like that one of the most profound energies in my life that's, that's really affected me has, is, is grace. Um, because I do think that whether we call it grace or, you know, however our, our, um, our way of making meaning is of, of what we experience is, we do get through these, these difficult moments and we, we do continue to find incredible joy and beauty in the world. And it's just so, it's something that it just never ceases to me, amaze me about the human experience. Yes. And I think, you know, two things really uh, jump out at me as I hear you, as I hear you talk with such depth and um, love, really, is the concept that we are so conditioned to put our attention on things that we don't want or things that aren't working. Uh, and sometimes, sometimes you'll meet people who are strictly putting their attention on things that are working and things that we, they do want. And that's good, but but both both of those ways of focusing our attention kind of are that w one extreme or the other, uh, black and white, all or nothing. And 
what you're really talking about is being able to take in and put our attention on it all, being the ultimate witness observer to our environment and to what's going on around us and what's going on within us. And so when I read that post and when I hear you speaking, the ability to really hold the grief and the sorrow right alongside the appreciation for the joy and the beauty was so profound. And I think we're in a time, as we all uh, are experiencing a very similar thing, this global pandemic, this, this uh, requirement to shelter in place. So we're, some people are feeling deprivation, they're feeling very scared, and they're feeling grief. And some people are taking advantage of this time, and they're seeing the blessings and the beauty. And I think I think that it's, it is really all about being able to hold it all, to not lie to ourselves and deny maybe the negative feelings that are, are inside of us around this whole experience, uh, and, and to also allow for the possibility that this experience could bring some kind of blessings to us individually, but also collectively. Does that make sense? It makes absolute sense. Um, and one of the things that I, I always believe is important to remind people of is that um, I often observe a strong tendency for um, sometimes to have that. We, we It's very difficult to hold space for ourselves and particularly, it's actually oftentimes more difficult to watch those we love suffer. Um, and so we do have this built-in tendency, I think, sometimes to try to minimize the pain and the suffering and to really try to like, you know, keep looking on the bright side, like almost like trying to like frantically cheerlead people into diverting their attention from the former, you know, to really just stay, fi if we can just stay fixated on the good, right? Like that's what our reality will be. And certainly we have incredible, incredible, incredible power as the creators of our own stories and lives to seek out and, um, and find meaning and create meaning and really to create, you know, just beautiful lives for ourselves born of anything. Um, but I, I also believe that there is, there is a, a compassion that is, you know, interwoven with the acceptance of, but if that's not where you are right now, and you need to sit with something really hard, that's okay too. And I do find that, you know, one of the, the skills that I hope we can continue to expand is to allow more space for, for people really to believe that it's okay to be experiencing what they are, when they are, how they are, and that actually that's what one of the tools we can use um, to, to become more resilient um, and to, to, to take even greater lessons forward from everything that we experience in yes. this world. Yes, beautifully said. And the other thing I was, I was thinking about, which is interesting, and, and maybe this is like a no duh to you, but how the float tank is actually a physical manifestation of all that we're kind of talking about. You know, the healing that comes from holding it all in that tank and actually the floating in the way you've described it enables us to connect with the the sort of the the, the mind body spirit in a very different way uh and it's kind of like we're in that tank and we're 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 holding it all in that tank and we're able to actually see and feel it all, almost like an out-of-body experience. Yes, that definitely resonates. Um, and it's funny because as much as we're a spa, we kind of, you know, laugh sometimes because not every flow is, feels like a spa experience because you're taking yourself in there. That's and what I can feel is if there's a, I know that the, the very few people I've talked to that have had the experience kind of, it begins with a lot of anxiety for people. And, and if we think about it, we have so many tools and resources 
um, you know, and, and not to be judgmental, but a lot of them, you know, like a lot of them are numbing. So like, you know, addictions and there are, we have so many tools at our disposal. Um, you know, there's a, a term that I don't, I don't really, um, toxic positivity. I think that that feels a little judgmental to me. That's not really what I mean, but there's a, we have such a culture of numbing out or denying the painful aspects of our existence. Yes. Um, for, for pleasure, for, um, for comfort, for ease. Um, and, you know, if we really think about, you know, the, the root of, you know, of those practices, yes, you can, you can, we, we can, would we have the ability through, through substance, et cetera, to manipulate how we're, we're feeling? Yes. But what if we allowed ourselves to sit in the discomfort? and to really feel it and hold it and take it in. And what if in doing so, that's the thing that actually allowed us to then release it instead of carrying it forward with us. Mm. Wow. And I would add, what if it was the alchemizing agent that allowed that? In other words, we we actually have a tendency to want to push away or not let in the true thing that is the medicine that could could help alchemize itself into healing is that that's kind of deep and i think it it's just an extension of sort of what you just said absolutely that that very much resonates yeah because so many of the experiences that when we honestly look back have shaped us into the version of ourselves we're so grateful to have become. Yes. Many of those experiences are not experiences we would have chosen to have had we had a choice at the time. Amen. <laughs> Amen to that. Yeah, it's it's um it's some deep stuff and I uh we are we are out of we are running out of time here. So I I I know Kelly that there are so many things that that we've touched on today that that we could elaborate on and uh, really expound in the energy of, and I think that would help a lot of people. So hopefully we can do this again. And, you know, as we move through these hard times, I implore our listeners at Whole Soul School and Foundation to remember that there, there are no accidents, there are no mistakes, that there is divine guidance in everything that is happening uh, inside of us and to us and around us and to find a level of peace as best we can in the way that resonates with us to, to, to find the balance and the peace within as, as best we can, I guess, you know, and, and I think that what you're doing at the whole, at, at the whole living center, what we're trying to do at whole soul school and foundation is to provide sort of a a nurturing womb of sorts that that provides comfort and support to people, um, not just during hard times, but also during times of great expansion. So, you know, I want to thank you so much for being with me today. And we've had some some technical trouble, and we've both kind of tried to have patience as we move through that. Um, and hopefully, we can do this again uh, in the near future. And I want to thank all our listeners at Whole Soul School and Foundation for tuning in. Um, Marie and I plan to roll out uh, as many conversations that we can that time allows and our health allows and the world allows. And you can visit us on Facebook. Uh, you can visit us on iTunes and Buzzsprout and any other places where, where podcasts are are uh, being sent out into the world. <laughs> um, Marie has become the, the technological guru. So she, she's got us connected in, in a lot of different ways. So please consider going, even going back during this time of, of quiet and, and peace in your life. Think about going back into the whole Soul School and Foundation archives because starting in January, 2019, we have a series of podcasts and fireside chats, especially between Marie and I that, that I think you would find inspiring and educational and uplifting during this time. So thank you, Kelly, so much for being with me today. Thank you, Lacey. 
And uh, I wish you great health and happiness and joy through this time as we hold all that is going on uh, within us. And please stay in touch. And be, and uh, I hope that that the journey forward for all of us is full of blessings and that we all can through through our vision, through our clear vision of 2020, come out the other side with new insights and new awarenesses and a new sense of wholeness um, for all of us. So thank you. Thank you, Kelly, and thank you for joining us.